listening activity 5 the brave hunter okeke is a nigerian boy whose father was killed by a wild boar which the local people called ezi ohia okeke is determined to kill the boar one day while he is looking for the boar he crosses his tribe's boundary a boy called okacha stops him and demands to know why he is there okeke explains and okacha agrees to help him look for the boar what happens next listen to the story the brave hunter that's as he oh here okeke said i would know him anywhere see one of his ears is broken it happened when he was battling with my father when you finish killing him you must return to your own lands okacha said okeke nodded but i cannot shoot him in the water okeke stretched himself full length at the foot of a tree soon the sun will sink behind the hill then he will lead his herd out of the river to graze he cupped his chin in his hands and fixed his eyes on ezi oya's great head and ears which seemed to float by themselves on the surface of the water overhead some birds made the forest clearing ring with their song okeke listened to the birds he too would sing again when ezi ohia's ears hung in the smoke that twisted under the roof of his cave as the sun slid down the sky towards the west and the great heat lessened the jungle began to come slowly to life ezi ohia lifted his huge body out of the river the water dripping from his ears snake like okeke slid along on his stomach until he was out of the shelter of the trees and into the dry grass at the edge of the clearing okacha followed him amazed for he had never seen such a good hunter among his own people the boars were out of the water and struggling up the river bed led by ezi ohia the huge boar with the great ears okeke rolled onto his back and drew his knees up to his stomach gripping his bow with his feet he slipped an arrow into the bow string ah okacha breathed in amazement the great hunters who had used this ancient method had long since died and the younger men had never mastered it you will never kill him that way okeke okacha said it's far too difficult no one can do it any longer i smile lit up okeke's face i can he said my father who was a great hunter taught me if he had fired his arrow this way when ezi ohia attacked him he would be alive today he twisted around on his arched back and aimed his bow at the huge leader of the herd who he shouted suddenly who ezi ohia the boar spun round and threw up its head who okeke shouted again who ezi ohia the boar tore fiercely at the ground with its long tusks then okeke pulled the bow string back until his hands were against his chin and aimed the arrow okacha was ready to fly for dear life but okeke's arms and legs were taut and steady and his feet gripped the 5 foot bow as firmly as his hands would have done 
as the hoya thundered towards the boy, his great hooves beating on the hard ground. Okacha's legs began to tremble like a deer's when warned of danger. I must not show fear in front of a boy younger than myself, he thought nervously. Okacha's eyes widened in terror as the huge boar swept closer. There was a sudden noise as Okeke released the bowstring and the arrow sped towards its target. With this ancient method of shooting, more power was given to the bow and the arrow flew at almost double the speed it would have done using the normal method. The muscles in Okacha's legs moved like springs and he ran into the jungle. Okacha lay in the jungle, listening fearfully. Would the big boar come looking for him after it had killed Okeke? He began to creep deeper into the undergrowth. He had only gone a few yards when a long drawn out who came through the forest. He jumped up. It was Okeke's voice. Like someone in a dream, the older boy ran back to the edge of the clearing. Okeke was still lying on his back and in front of him, its broad nose almost touching the boy's feet, lay the great boar, legs folded under it, motionless. Using Okacha's axe, Okeke cut off the boar's head and put it into a nearby ant hill. It was an old trick of his people. Within an hour, the boar's head had been picked clean. He carried the skull down to the river and washed it, scrubbing it with sand. When he had finished, he rested the huge ears across his shoulders and turned his face towards the hill. As the Ohia's big ears would hang in the smoke, twisting under the roof of the cave and there would be singing and dancing round the fire. Mm -hmm.